omnipotent and beautiful fairy versus capital rich and young boss, the true daughter of the Pei family, the most powerful family in Jiangcheng, has been recognized from the countryside. Before anyone arrives, rumors have spread everywhere. Have you heard that the true daughter of the Pei family, who was recognized from the countryside, is incredibly stupid and has an ugly appearance? Pei Qian looked at his enchanting beauty in the mirror and fell silent. I came from a small place in the countryside, and I heard that I fight all day without any knowledge or skills. Pei Qian, the outstanding graduate of Jiangqing No. 1 High School, is in the most prominent position. Even if Pei Qian is a true daughter, she can't compare to Pei Zhixin, the most talented woman in Jiangqing. A certain fairy smiled slightly and said, I am indeed ignorant and inexperienced. However, when top hackers, miracle doctors, champion racers, border witches, world's number one assassins, their little vests are revealed one by one. The heir of the Gu family, a top-tier tycoon in the capital, pressed her against the corner of the wall and pressed her lips against her earlobe. Good boy, you said you were ignorant and incompetent. You're so talented, I have to make a commitment to you. Keywords of the novel Sinking in a ferry without a pop-dot-up window, sinking in a ferry complete collection download, sinking in a ferry's latest chapter reading. Chapter 1 Return to the Pei Family 1 you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Return to the Pei Family 1 The weather in Jiangcheng at the end of August is extremely humid and hot. Pei Family A woman dressed in luxurious attire sat on a luxurious European style sofa, savoring the top notch black tea that the servant had just brewed. Her movements were extremely elegant, and upon closer observation, the woman's face showed impatience. On the other side of the sofa, a beautiful girl is flipping through a book. My dear, although Pei Qian has returned, for the past seventeen years, my mother has treated you as if you were my own daughter. Now I only hope that Pei Qian can have half of your understanding. Su Ning had already learned from Butler Chen that Pei Qian had the lowest academic performance in his previous school, and was ignorant and inexperienced, causing trouble in fights. No one can control her, Compared to her adopted daughter Pei Zhixin who has been raising her for 17 years, it's a world of difference. Pei Zhixin is widely recognized as the school bell of Jiangqing No. 1 High School. She plays the piano well, has a gentle and quiet personality, and was born into the Pei family, the largest family in Jiangqing. Even as an adopted daughter, the Pei family treats her as if she were their own child, and they like her very much. The first lady in Jiangcheng truly lives up to her reputation. Mom, no matter what, we are both your and dad's daughters. I will take care of myself and adapt to the life here. Su Ning was warmed by Pei Zhixin's understanding and said, Zhixin, with you here, I can rest assured. Pei Qian's reputation there is extremely poor. How could a girl be like this? Mom, don't worry, it's getting late. You can tidy up and go to the countryside to pick her up. I have arranged to go to a concert with Qin Shui. Please be careful. After speaking, Pei Zhixin got in the driver's car and arranged to go to a concert with Han Qin Shui. Pei Zhixin got off the car, and Han Qin Shui was already waiting outside the concert hall, dressed in the same attire as a wealthy and wealthy woman. Han Qin Shui can be considered as Pei Zhixin's good friend. The Han family is also a wealthy family in Jiangcheng, but they cannot compare to the Pei family in the end. My dear, I heard that the daughter of the Pei family has returned, still a girl from the countryside. Pei Zhixin nodded slightly, her head buried a bit low. After all, she is the biological daughter of the Pei family. Since she has found her, she should come back. Zhixin, you are just too kind. Pei Qian, a wild girl from the countryside, has long been circulating in the circle. She is uneducated, ugly, and even fights. She is completely different from you. Han Qinxue can't help roast that such a girl is not even as good as a foil in front of Pei Zhixin, the first lady in Jiangcheng. All right, don't let irrelevant people affect your mood. The concert is about to start. 
A hint of pride flashed in Pei Ji's heart. What about the true daughter of the Pei family? Before she arrived, she had already become so stinky in the wealthy circles of Jiangcheng. How could she compare with her? Pusong Town Under a huge Bodhi tree in the village, a graceful young girl carried a black backpack with one hand and a lollipop in her mouth. On her fair and flawless face, her facial features were exquisitely beautiful, vividly resembling that of an enchanting fairy. Wearing white T-dot shirt jeans, but still unable to conceal the coldness of the whole body. Pei Qian was bored playing with his phone when suddenly the bell rang. Hello. The cold voice revealed a hint of impatience, and Pei Qian's beautiful eyebrows furrowed slightly. Shallow, I heard you're going to Jiangcheng. A man's mocking voice came from his phone. I'll just hang up if it's okay, it's annoying. Hey, no, no, my ancestors. Recently, an unknown person has been looking for you and has opened a full 300 million yuan account. Please go see a doctor. Pei Qian's mouth curved slightly as he said, I won't accept any anonymous orders, but 300 million yuan is really attractive to me, after all, I'm really tight now. There are many places in the city that need to be spent. On the other end of the phone, when Charan's lips twitched slightly, thinking to himself that this ancestor was never the one who lacked money. So, can you answer? Not answering. Without waiting for any reaction from the other side, Pei Qian hung up the phone. At this moment, a black Bentley happened to be driving in front of him, and the car window slowly fell down, revealing a lady's face in the back row. Su Ning saw the perfect face outside the car window, like a fairy, and thought to herself why it was so far from the rumor. Her heart unconsciously softened a bit. Pei Qian. I'm your mother. Get in the car and follow me back. Pei Qian's delicate eyes looked at Su Ning in the car, even though she was still well maintained in middle age, with almost no traces of time on her face. Silently open the other side of the car door and sit inside. Is this the attitude towards one's own mother? The newly aroused good impression in Su Ning's heart suddenly dissipated, and she sighed in her heart that the girls from the countryside were simply uncivilized. The car slowly started, and Su Ning suppressed her dissatisfaction. I have already asked your father to put you and Ji Xin in the same school. I know you are used to wandering around in the rural welfare institution, but I don't allow you to bring those vulgar things from the countryside to Jiangcheng. You go back and learn from Jixin well. Don't embarrass our Pei family. Su Ning spoke these words that had been suppressed in her heart in one breath, feeling a lot of relief in her heart. What non-mainstream thing. After more than a decade, I suddenly want to take care of me now. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Returning to the Pei Family 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Returning to the Pei Family 2, is this your attitude when talking to your mother? Su Ning was impatient, and her face had already lost the cultivation of a wealthy lady, becoming somewhat ferocious. Pei Qian shrugged nonchalantly and didn't want to continue arguing with Su Ning. He closed his eyes and yesterday received an order to fix a network vulnerability in M Country Company. He slept later than usual at night. In the evening, the Black Bentley slowly stopped at the entrance of Pei's house. The Pei family was brightly lit, and Pei Qian walked slowly into the door with his backpack on his back. He saw a young girl wearing a white dress sitting on the luxurious European sofa, with an extremely dignified posture. Pei Zixin straightened her waist as she saw the car slowly coming in from the door. When she saw the car approaching her doorstep, a cold and straight figure got out of the car. Then, a peerless face turned around, and Pei Zixin couldn't help but be stunned, with an unknown jealousy burning in her heart. Seeing Su Ning immediately getting off the other side of the car, Pei Zixin ignored Pei Qian and went to help Su Ning enter the door, pretending to see Pei Qian. You're just a shallow younger sister, right? I'm Pei Zixin. My mom said you're two months younger than me, and I'll be your sister from now on. Pei Zixin pretended to have a friendly attitude. 
In Su Ning's eyes, when compared to Pei Qian's attitude towards her in the car just now, she suddenly felt that Pei Zixin was truly a blessing from heaven, killing Pei Qian in every aspect. Pei Qian let out a faint hum and said, Where's my room? Su Ning held Pei Zixin's hand and slowly sat on the sofa, saying angrily, Manager Chen will take her to her room. Yes, ma'am. Butler Chen nodded and looked at Su Ning's attitude towards Pei Qian, feeling clear in his heart. Regardless of whether Pei Qian followed or not, he went upstairs on his own. Pei Qian Ma followed Manager Chen silently. Before going upstairs, I heard Pei Zixin unconsciously say to Su Ning, Mom, thank you for your hard work. The rural environment is too poor. Pei Qian sneered in his heart, knowing that it was intentional to listen to her. The careful thinking that Pei Zixin is playing in front of her is really not enough. As he spoke, he followed Butler Chen to the innermost room and opened the door. The interior decoration was incredibly simple and perfunctory. Miss Eyre, this will be your room from now on. After speaking, without looking at Pei Qian's reaction, he turned around and left. Pei Qian closed the door and placed his black backpack on the chair in front of the desk. He took out a computer and several foreign original books from inside and placed them on the table. He put a few simple clothes in his bag in the wardrobe and went to the bathroom in the room to take a shower. On the evening of late August in Jiangcheng, with a slight chill, Pei Qian changed into a black hoodie. Sitting in a chair, wiping away her black hair with boredom, she looked at her exquisite and beautiful face in the mirror and sighed. It's only a year, and when the time comes, we can get rid of it. Thinking of this, my heart felt a little better, and there happened to be a knock outside the door. Miss Eyre, it's dinner time. Please come downstairs to have your meal. Got it. Pei Qian finished blowing his hair, tied a refreshing high ponytail, and slowly descended the stairs. In the Pei family restaurant, there is a middle dot aged man sitting on the main seat, which is Pei Guoyen. On the left side is Su Ning, and on the right side is Pei Zixin. Such a harmonious family of three now seems out of place for Pei Qian. Shallow, I'm your dad, come sit down. We're having dinner now. Pei Qian casually sat down next to Pei Zixin and said, Okay. Shallow, I heard that dad enrolled you in number one middle school, and I am also in number one middle school. In the future, you can ask me anything you don't understand at home or at school. Pei Zixin smiled, looking sensible and well behaved, making it easy for people to make mistakes. It was just a pure reminder to Pei Qian that she was just an outsider, just like the owner of this family. Okay. Pei Qian didn't take it lightly and didn't want to compete with her for that bit of indecent thinking. By the way, you came in a hurry and haven't properly decorated your room yet. Feel free to let me know if you need anything. Pei Qian's lips curved into a faint smile, beautiful and captivating, but the smile did not reach his eyes. Thank you so much, he said after finishing dinner, Pei Qian was too lazy to have any conversation with the family and greeted them before returning to his room. Opening the computer, slender fingers fluttered on the keyboard. Soon, a web page was presented, and Pei Qian entered a password. The web page content became one reward after another. After browsing at lightning speed, Pei Qian received several orders to fix web bugs. In just an hour, a text message was sent from his phone, indicating that 10 million yuan had been deposited into his bank account. Just close the computer when my phone rang. Pei Qian glanced at the number and picked it up. It's so late, you better have something to attend to. On the other end of the phone, a sweet and lovely voice came over, Dear Chan Chan, come to the night bar, when Churin is also here. Let's gather together. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Night Bar 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Night Bar 1 Pei Qian said helplessly, Okay, I'll see you later. Pei Qian took out a white duckbill hat from the wardrobe and put it on his head, hiding most of his stunning face under the hat. After leaving the door, I could only hear the faint sound of Pei Zixin practicing the piano through the hallway. 
Su Ning and Pei Guiyan had already rested in the room. Pei Qian walked out of the villa area and waited on the roadside for a while before stopping a taxi. Master, night bar. In the nightclub. Men and women were singing and dancing in the center of the dance floor, and the colorful lights in the bar shone on everyone's faces. The air was filled with the smell of smoke and alcohol. In the VIP private room on the second floor of the bar. Men and women sat on the sofa, drinking and punching. The man sitting in the middle, his slender legs intertwined on the table in front of him, dressed in a black suit that looked noble and elegant, with a straight figure. In the dim light, he vaguely saw perfect facial features, as if he had been favored by an Yuwa. The corners of the mouth seemed to smile rather than smile, but there was a cold indifference in the eyes. Gu Lanjin, the only heir of the Gu family, the head of the wealthy family in the capital, is the dream lover of all the nobles in the capital. The women's gaze was almost fixed on Gu Lanjin, but no one dared to speak up. Lanjin, how long do you plan to stay in Jiangcheng? Han Fifen asked. One week. Han Fifen nodded. Gu Lanjin and he had known each other since childhood, but later the Han family withdrew from the capital and came to Jiangcheng for development. Okay, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Gu Lanjin nodded lightly and glanced sideways at the dance floor through the glass of the private room. VIP's private room has a great view, with a view of the entire bar. Gu Lanjin saw a slender figure, a black hooded short hoodie paired with dark gray tight jeans, revealing a slender waist that was white to shiny. Her legs were thin and straight, exuding a cool demeanor that was out of place with the surrounding environment. Gu Lanjin's eyes have never left Pei Qian since she entered. He is truly a seductive fairy that enchants all beings. Pei Qian walked in from the entrance of the bar and glanced lightly at the entire bar, his gaze fixed on the black glass on the second floor. Is it her illusion? From the moment she entered, she felt a burning gaze hovering over her. Shallow baby. Here. Xia Qingqing greeted Pei Qian to the card seat, where a young man with a wild and unrestrained temperament was already sitting. Seeing Xia Qingqing leading Pei Qian to the seat, he smiled warmly and felt mischievous. When Chen and Xia Qingqing are one of Pei Qian's few good friends, and their relationship is very good. It's really harder to invite shallow fairies to meet than to meet the president of Country M. You're the only one who talks a lot, Xia Qingqing tapped when Chen's head Pei Qian took off his hat, revealing his seductive eyes and smooth forehead. My feelings for you are really rock solid. I specifically pushed a three million dollar order to find you. When Chen glanced at Xia Qingqing and Pei Qian and said, feel free to drink today. Young Master One will pay for it. Xia Qingqing said, long live Young Master One. Pei Qian said, damn capitalism, let's have a pinch of watermelon juice. I ordered some more wine, but Pei Qian has a bad tolerance for alcohol. In order to wait, he had to take two people home, just sipping watermelon juice. Just as the three of them were chatting in high spirits, a few big men from the neighboring booth walked towards Pei Qian with their phones and a few glasses of wine. The leading man raised a lewd smile and said, Little sister, do you want to go play with my brother's card seat? Qin Zhonggang had always been following Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing, one like a fairy and the other like an angel, one beautiful and charming, and the other pure and lovely. Pei Qian frowned and took a sip of watermelon juice, completely ignoring the man. Stay away from us. A cold and distant voice sounded, and Pei Qian said impatiently. Do you know who Qin Gu is? Don't be shameless. Xia Qingqing chuckled and said, Qian Qian, who do you know? Pei Qian shook his head in coordination and said, I don't know, it's so ugly. I'm so scared, Qingqing. Qin Zhong angrily said, Toast, don't eat, fine, and just dragged the two of them to the next door. Just as he was about to grab the nearest Pei Qian, his hand was already blocked by Wen Chen before he could get close. He stood in front of Pei Qian and said, Brother, don't cause trouble. Wen Chen smiled, with a hint of rascal in his handsome demeanor. 
Pei Qian gave a faint guidance behind Wen Charan, how about finding a more spacious place and exercising your muscles and bones? Gu Lanjin and Han Fan Fan were ready to go back, bid farewell to the remaining friends, and just as they were about to go downstairs, they saw this scene above. Several burly men gathered around a booth, where two girls sat. A man stood in front of them, preventing them from being touched in the slightest. If it were a normal girl, she would have been scared in such a situation long ago, but on the other hand, Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing became more and more calm, as if they were standing out from the situation. This bar is jointly owned by Han Fifan and several other friends, and is also one of the behind-the-scenes owners. Seeing this situation, without hesitation, he wants to help the two girls out. Lan Jin, either you wait for me here. Gu Lan Jin only saw the cold figure in her eyes, I'm with you. Han Fifan raised his eyebrows. How could he remember that Gu Lan Jin never wanted to get involved in such things? End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Night Bar 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Night Bar 2 Gu Lan Jin followed Han Fifan calmly, his gaze fixed on Pei Qian. Han Fifan walked over and glanced at Qin Zhong, Sir, I am the owner of this bar. If you continue to harass our customers like this, we will be impolite to you. Qin Zhong scared and naturally knew Han Fifan. He was a famous young master with a huge family power, which he couldn't afford to provoke. Han Gongzi, it turns out this is your person. We'll leave now. After speaking, he left the bar with a group of people feeling disheartened, without any trace of the arrogant aura he had just shown. Xia Qingqing said boredly, I thought there was finally a chance to stretch my body. Pei Qian glanced at her and said, Well, for someone like you who is always lazy and lazy, you can catch up and let them fight you now. Xia Qingqing stuck out her tongue. Thank you very much, when Chen also heard of the young master of the Han family Han Fifan looked at Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing with a hint of apology and said, I don't know if it scared you. Otherwise, your consumption today would have been waived. No need. Pei Qian took the last sip of watermelon juice from his cup and glanced at Han Fifan, as well as the man behind Han Fifan. Wen Chen, please take Qingqing back and I'll take a taxi myself. Wen Chen naturally felt at ease with Pei Qian. Xia Qingqing drank a little wine, and now her cheeks were red. Pei Qian had not touched any of the wine, and Wen Chen also drank it. However, she had a good tolerance for alcohol. Send me a message when you arrive at Pei's house, she said after finishing speaking, he left the bar carrying the swaying Xia Qingqing. Pei Qian didn't intend to linger much and was about to pick up his duckbill cap from his seat and put it on, ready to leave. However, he heard a magnetic and enchanting voice coming from behind. Miss Pei, is that right? I'll take you back. Gu Lanjin stopped when she saw Pei Qian preparing to leave, turned around to look at herself, and at the same time, she saw the girl's face. Indeed, beauty is beyond measure, and it makes it impossible to take one's gaze away. Pei Qian was taken aback for a moment. The man's upright figure and handsome facial features, with a shallow tear mole under his eyes, exuded a strong sense of abstinence from top to bottom. Thank you, there's no need. Pei Qian coldly refused, unwilling to have too much conversation with strangers, and then turned around and left. Han Fifan also looked at the girl's departing figure and said, I say Lan Jin, this girl really looks like a fairy. Isn't it just a living fairy? Gu Lan Jin thought to herself. I have something to attend to, so I'll leave first. After speaking, Gu Lan Jin quickly left with the car key in hand. Leave Han Fifan alone in place, unable to figure it out. Pei Qian waited at the entrance of the bar for a few minutes, becoming increasingly impatient. At this point, a taxi could not be stopped at the entrance of the bar. When he was about to take out his phone and use the app to take a taxi, he realized that his phone had automatically turned off due to running out of battery. Pei Qian Gang, who was about to accept his fate, was about to take the first step back home when a pure black Maybach parked in front of him. 
The car window fell down, and it was the man who had just called out to him. Looking carefully at the man in front of him, Pei Qian couldn't help but marvel at the perfection of just one profile. His whole body was as cold as a flower on a towering cliff, but when the man looked into his eyes, there was an indescribable emotion. I forgot to tell Miss Pei that it's not convenient to take a taxi here. I can take you back. Thank you very much, Pei Qian said, feeling helpless just as I was about to open the door of the back seat of the car, I heard the man's deep magnetic voice, why, Miss Pei treated me like a driver. Gu Lanjin got off the car, circled around, and walked to the passenger door. With slender and symmetrical fingers, he opened the door and said gentlemanly, please. Pei Qian is sitting in the passenger seat, fasten his seat belt. Thank you very much. Gu Lanjin smiled and said, I heard many words of gratitude from you tonight. How do you want to thank me? Pei Qian gave an address and the car slowly started, I'm just a student with no money or power. I don't want money, and I don't want you to help me with anything. What do you want, said Pei Qian, who made a mistake, then remember, my name is Gu Lanjin. What's your name? Pei Qian. At the entrance of Pei's house. The car slowly stopped at the entrance of the villa, which was already pitch black. Pei Qian unbuttoned his seatbelt and said, then I'll leave first. Goodbye by chance. Without looking back, he got off the car and entered the Pei family. The man in the driver's seat looked at her departing figure, lit a cigarette, and as soon as the lights of a window in the villa lit up, he was about to drive away when he received a call from Han Fifan. Hello. I've seen it all. What's your relationship with that fairy? Why did you send someone home? You're not interested in her, are you? Gu Lanjin's slender fingers supported her forehead and said, No, I just think this girl is very interesting. Don't deceive me. When did you open the car door for a girl, and when did you let the girl sit in the passenger seat of your car? Before Han Fifan could finish complaining on the other end of the phone, Gu Lanjin had already turned off the phone, glanced at the villa light and slowly drove away. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Banquet 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Banquet 1 Pei Qian sent a message to Wen Churin when he returned, saying that he had arrived home, took another shower, and changed into pajamas. Lying in bed, looking at the ceiling, I remembered the man from earlier. Gu Lanjin. Is that Gu family from the capital? It's really interesting. After sleeping until 10 o'clock in the morning, Pei Qian glanced at his phone, processed some messages, and calmly got up to wash and change clothes. There was a knocking outside the door. Miss Eyre, Madam has asked you to come down. Hmm. Su Ning was sipping coffee downstairs in a bad mood, accompanied by Pei Zhixin. There are no rules at all. I just got home and became lazy like this. I really brought all the bad habits from the countryside. Pei Zhixin inserted a piece of fruit and handed it to Su Ning, Mom, don't worry too much. I believe Qian Qian will gradually improve. If only she could be half as sensible as you. Su Ning couldn't help but sigh again. Upon hearing the footsteps coming downstairs from upstairs, Pei Qian was dressed in a white shirt paired with jeans, and even the simplest clothes looked extremely beautiful on her. Pei Zhixin secretly clenched his fist. What's up with calling me here? Su Ning didn't immediately answer when she heard it, picked up her shelf, and elegantly took a sip of the coffee in her hand. Your father said that since you have returned, our Pei family is also the top family in Jiangcheng, so naturally we will hold a banquet for you. Pei Zhixin let out a thud in her heart. She didn't expect Pei Guiyan to be so eager to hold this banquet, which indirectly emphasized her identity as an adopted daughter. But mom, Chan Chan has just returned and hasn't learned many rules. I'm afraid everyone will have a bad evaluation of her. After a moment of contemplation, Pei Zhixin thought to himself. Who said I need this banquet? Pei Qian sneered in his heart. This Pei Zhixin had never been in sync with him since he returned. 
He had originally only wanted to stay at the Pei family for a year before leaving, and insisted on making her unhappy. What attitude are you having when talking to me? Look at how knowledgeable you are. Look at you, what do you look like? What attitude do you have towards me? What attitude do I naturally have towards you? Pei Qian was too lazy to argue with her. If it weren't for their insistence on admitting that he had come back, he would still be happy in the orphanage now. Su Ning choked and was about to refute when Pei Zixin quietly tugged at the corner of her clothes. She saw a car parked at the entrance of Pei's house, and an old figure got off the car. Pei Qian also noticed. I say this is shallow, I'm your grandfather. An old man came in from the door and walked up to Pei Qian. Pei Qian nodded slightly, feeling a hint of closeness on this grandfather. This is the first time I have felt this way since entering the Pei family. Hello, I'm Pei Qian. It's indeed a child from my Pei family, born so beautifully. Pei Haishiong looked at the stunning face in front of him and was very fond of it. Dad, don't say a word even if you come. Su Ning stood up and helped Pei Haishiong sit in the middle of the sofa. Pei Zixin obediently shouted, Grandpa. Pei Haishiong nodded lightly without saying much. Pei Zixin was at a loss. Although this grandfather did not live in the Pei family, he was an absolute existence. Although he had been trying to please him since childhood, his attitude towards him has always been indifferent. Actually, it's me who's in such a hurry. After all, as the only descendant of the Pei family, you just came back and cannot be neglected, said Pei Haishiong. Upon hearing this, Su Ning couldn't help but frowned slightly and caressed the back of Pei Zixin's hand. Dad, Zixin is also the daughter of our Pei family. She has been outstanding since childhood, she said, that's nature, and understanding is what I watched grow up with. Pei Haishiong saw Su Ning's favoritism and knew Su Ning's dissatisfaction with Pei Qian at this moment. Thank you Grandpa, but I don't need it. Pei Qian pondered for a moment and had already heard those rumors, knowing that Pei Haishiong wanted to clarify for himself as soon as possible. There is an extra respect for this old man in my heart. I haven't returned home for over a decade, it's already a grievance to you. This matter is settled, and I will order all the invitations to be sent out. Pei Qian had no choice but to agree. After finishing lunch, Pei Qian returned to his room. Just as he was about to open his computer, a knock on the door rang out. Shallow, may I come in? Pei Zixin's voice rang out. What's up? Pei Qian closed the computer, opened the door, leaned against the door frame, looking extremely lazy. The banquet will be held the night after tomorrow. I'm afraid you may not have a suitable dress when you just come back. I happen to have the latest one delivered in my wardrobe, so I can give you two pieces as a gift. No need, I will prepare it myself. Pei Qian's cold voice sounded, without any emotion, lazy to guess her thoughts. With a loud bang, Pei Qian closed the door without waiting for her answer, leaving Pei Zixin standing outside the door in a daze. Outside the door. Pei Zixin suppressed her inner anger, but saw a figure walking towards her and spoke again. Shallow, don't think too much. I didn't mean that. I just want to help you because you haven't participated in such a scene before. Pei Qian inside the door heard Pei Zixin's voice and felt puzzled. What kind of demon are you going to be again? Pei Zixin's gentle voice carried a hint of grievance as Su Ning walked over. What's wrong with Zixin? I was just doing it for my sister's good and wanted to give her a few dresses to choose from. After all, she had never attended a banquet before, so I didn't expect her to just close the door. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Banquet 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Banquet 2 Su Ning looked at her daughter's grievances and felt that Pei Qian was not sensible or cultured. Upon second thought, it was ultimately handled by Pei Haishiong alone, and it should not be taken lightly. My dear, you can go to your cabinet and pick two pieces for her later. Don't appear like we're neglecting her. 
Okay mom. Let's go, mom bought a very beautiful diamond necklace while shopping last time. You go try it on. After speaking, he pulled Pei Zixin away from the door. Pei Qian sat in front of the desk and opened an original book. She read page by page and quickly flipped through it. After reading for a while, she pondered for a moment and dialed a phone number. An old voice came from the other end of the phone. Shallow, why did you think of calling me? Mr. Fu, I have almost finished reading the books you gave me. I have time to deliver them to you over the weekend. Fu Zong thought for a moment and said, I still have a few new books here. You can take them together when the time comes. Thank you very much. I heard you went to the Pei family. Also, those rumors about you are simply too extreme. Fu Zong, who had always loved his students, although he had always kept himself in seclusion, inevitably heard some rumors and expressed concern. Pei Qian looked out the window and saw the black Bentley slowly driving into the villa courtyard. Pei Guyen got off the car and casually said, Well, it's a long story, you don't have to worry, I will investigate it thoroughly. Fu Zong was familiar with Pei Qian's temperament and was free to do as he pleased. It was okay to meet familiar people, but when encountering unfamiliar people, he didn't even want to say much, making it extremely difficult to get along with. Okay, just let me know if you have anything to do and come back to the laboratory when you have time. Pei Qian responded and waited for Fu Zong to hang up the phone, then looked out the window and pondered for a moment. Surprisingly, even Mr. Fu knew about this matter. Pei Qian understood clearly, with a mocking curve at the corner of his mouth. Not long after, someone came to notify us to eat. On the dining table. Due to Pei Haixiong's arrival, Pei Guiyan and Su Ning sat on one side, but Pei Zixin, who was originally sitting on the other side of the main seat, was embarrassed. Shallow, come sit next to Grandpa, Grandpa, take a good look at you. Pei Ji's heart was filled with anger, but on the surface, she still maintained the elegance of a noble lady. Shallow sister, I have prepared a dress for you that I haven't worn, but it's in my size, if it's not possible, ask the servant to make some changes for you, I said it's not necessary this afternoon. In Pei Qian's view, Pei Zixin had already written those cautious thoughts on his face. Pei Haixiong frowned and said, isn't there still one day left? It's not too late to buy tomorrow. Su Ning felt that the atmosphere was not right, and she pulled down Pei Guiyan's sleeve under the dining table, quickly coming out to smooth things out. Dad, Jishin is also for the sake of our Pei family's face, and besides, Jishin's clothes are also the latest models. Pei Guiyan put down his chopsticks and carefully considered his wording, Shallow, your mother is also right. You need to take it seriously. In their eyes, Pei Qian was the wild girl from the countryside, naturally not understanding the rules of the wealthy family. She could not attend the banquet with casual clothes, let alone be the host of the banquet. Got it. The meal was not pleasant, but Su Ning still maintained a slight smile on her face. Unable to resist, I compared Pei Qian and Pei Zixin again. After a while, Pei Qian was about to go out. Passing by the living room, he saw Pei Zixin watching TV with Su Ning, chatting and laughing. Seeing Pei Qian leaving, Su Ning said, Where are you going so late? Go meet a friend. Before Su Ning could reply, Pei Qian had already left the Pei family with long legs. Su Ning was very dissatisfied when she saw her departing figure. Pei Zixin obediently spoke up, Mom, little sister Qian Qian just came to Jiangqin, where did she come from as a friend? Su Ning couldn't help but worry after hearing these words. Pei Zixin saw the change in Su Ning's expression and continued, Yesterday while practicing the piano, I vaguely heard someone going out. As a result, I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night and saw a man getting out of a car at the entrance of the villa. Why do you only say such a big thing now? I'm also afraid of misunderstanding my younger sister Qian Qian. Now that she's gone out again, I'm really afraid she might be taken away. Pei Zixin pretended to be aggrieved. 
Su Ning saw her aggrieved appearance and felt that her attitude towards Pei Zixin had been a bit extreme just now, and her voice couldn't help but soften. Zixin, in the future, you can help take care of her more at school, and she will be your sister no matter what. Pei Qian casually stopped a taxi on the roadside. Master, go to the Rhine Mansion. After a while, the taxi stopped at the entrance of the Rhine Mansion. The driver turned around and said, Miss, this is a high dot end community. I can't get into this taxi, so I can only take you here. The Rhine Mansion gathers wealthy aristocrats, research experts, or celebrities from various fields. In short, the Rhine Mansion is not something that can be bought with money. The Jiang family also purchased a house, which is relatively close to number one middle school and only a dozen minutes by car. Pei Zixin basically lived in the Rhine mansion during her school years. Pei Qian nodded and paid to get off the car. The security guard standing at the entrance saw Pei Qian and became very excited. Miss Pei, you're here, he said Pei Qian nodded lightly and walked to the innermost part of the community, getting into the elevator and stopping at the top floor. The innermost building of the Rhine mansion is slightly higher than the other buildings, and being able to buy the top floor of this building is definitely the tallest in the Rhine mansion. However, Pei Qian has never seen her neighbor across from her. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Banquet 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Banquet 3 Pei Qian has never paid attention to this neighbor. He used to live in Pusong town and hardly lived in the Rhine mansion. Pei Qian opened the door with his fingerprints, and the whole house was reflected in front of him. The black marble floor complemented the gorgeous crystal lights on the roof, and the floor was covered with a pure white and soft wool carpet. The decoration of the whole house was low dot key, luxurious, and simple, which was very in line with Pei Qian's aesthetics. The whole house is divided into two floors. Pei Qian went upstairs to the cloakroom, which was filled with various bags, the latest dresses, shoes, and daily clothes, many of which were not yet on the market. This kind of closet is simply a paradise for women. Pei Qian's slender fingers, like white jade, wandered through rows of formal attire. Finally, his gaze fixed on a black strapless gothic-style short dress. He took off the dress, casually placed it in a bag, and selected matching high heels and accessories before preparing to leave. At this moment, the phone in my pocket rang. Pei Qian pressed the connect button and said, Hey, Ching Ching. Shallow, school is about to start, which school are you at? Xia Ching Ching's sweet voice sounded. One middle school. Then I'll tell my dad to transfer to number one middle school and join you. My dad knows he's with you and definitely doesn't object. Pei Qian raised his eyebrows and said, Are you not planning to return to M country? On the other end of the phone, Xia Qingqing answered with a smile, I don't plan to go back recently. There's a annoying ghost constantly harassing me. Pei Qian naturally knew who the so dot called annoying ghost Xia Qingqing was talking about, and helplessly said, You are really a pair of enemies. All right, don't mention him anymore. By the way, when Churin needs to go back to handle things and come back in a while. Got it. The two of them chatted about some things they didn't have and told Xia Qingqing about the Pei family hosting a banquet for them tomorrow. Xia Qingqing expressed great interest in it. Pei Qian hung up the phone, used mobile app to call a car, and went back to Pei's house. After getting off the car, Pei Qian walked slowly into the villa, but he didn't expect Su Ning and Pei Guiyan to sit on the sofa, as if waiting for him to go home. Shallow, come and sit down. We have something to ask you. Pei Qian silently sighed in his heart, is there anything wrong? Seeing her indifferent attitude, Su Ning's anger suddenly rose and her tone inevitably became stern. Xin said she saw you come back very late yesterday and even said you got off a man's car. Pei Qian shrugged and said lazily, so what? Su Ning saw that she still had this attitude, and she had already talked about it without any remorse. What kind of friends are you making? Pei Qian felt displeased upon hearing these words. 
Besides, is Gu Lanjin a person of no three no four? Since you all think that the friends I have made are all mediocre, what else do I have to say? After speaking, I was ready to carry the bag upstairs. Pei Guiyan, who had always remained silent, spoke up at this moment and said, Wait a moment, Chan Chan. Mom just hopes that you, as a girl, don't tarnish your reputation. Coming back with a man so late and being seen, it's inevitable that you'll lose your tongue. Su Ning stared at this bag. Su Ning had always been fond of luxury goods, but she had never seen this bag before. It must be the indecent dress that the man bought for him. Pei Qian, the man who bought you such a cheap dress, you should cut it off as soon as possible. Ji Xin has prepared a set of formal dresses for you and has left them in your room. When mentioning the cheap dress, Su Ning's tone carried a hint of disgust. Su Ning saw that she didn't answer, so she said to herself, you're not allowed to wear this tomorrow. Don't lose face with our Pei family. Pei Qian was too lazy to argue with her and carried the bag upstairs without hesitation. Entering the room, I took out the dress from the bag and hung it in the wardrobe. Leaving aside the dress that Pei Zixin had specially prepared for herself on the desk, she casually opened it and took a look. Sure enough, seeing the pitiful dress with little fabric, Pei Qian also knew Pei Zixin's intention. This dress design is very revealing and has strict requirements for body shape. Even if it can be worn, it looks like working in a nightclub. I'm afraid it's because I'm wearing this dress that I'll be ridiculed by the whole Jiangcheng. Pei Qian casually put away his clothes, as Pei Zixin had given him such a big gift. I naturally want to return a big gift to her. The next day. Pei Zixin made an early appointment with Han Qinxue to go to a beauty salon for skin management. After all, today we invited big shots with both heads and faces. Pei Zixin has always performed perfectly in public and does not allow any mistakes. In the afternoon, she also invited a well-known stylist to do her own styling. Pei Qian was awakened by the ringing of the phone and impatiently answered the call, Hello. Shallow, I have arranged for a stylist. Come to my house and let's go together. It happens that your car is still with me. Pei Qian himself did not want to go with the Pei family, so he agreed. Xia Qingqing had just returned to China and there were no suitable formal dresses in the apartment. He wanted to take Pei Qian to purchase a set first and also do some styling. Pei Qian arrived at Xia Qingqing's apartment in Jiangcheng with the dress he brought back yesterday and got off the taxi. Xia Qingqing happened to open the door and quickly welcomed Pei Qian. I was just thinking that you should be almost here, you come and drive. Pei Qian took the car key from Xia Qingqing's hand and walked towards the garage. A black large jeep parked in the garage, with top-of-the-line decorations inside. Pei Qian skillfully got on the car, started it, and the two of them went to the largest high dot end shopping mall in Jiangqing together. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Banquet 4 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Banquet for the car slowly parked in the underground parking garage of the mall. Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing got off the car and were about to get on the elevator when she looked at the car next to her in the spare time. Black Maybach with license plate Jing A88888. It's just a coincidence. The clothing brands on each floor of the mall are progressive, and the higher up, the more expensive they are. The two of them arrived at the fifth floor and got out of the elevator. Pei Qian accompanied Xia Qingqing's family to stroll around. Shallow, what do you think of this dress? Xia Qingqing picked up a pure white princess-style dress and gestured in front of the mirror. The salesperson looked at two girls with a student vibe. Although both of them had impeccable looks and slim and tall figures, after being a salesperson for so long, it was hard to tell what brand of clothes they wore. I couldn't help feeling a little disdain in my heart, as if I knew they couldn't afford it. There was a hint of coldness and perfunctory attitude towards them. It looks good, it suits you very well. Pei Qian glanced at it. Unlike Pei Qian's cold and beautiful demeanor, 
Xia Qingqing gives people a feeling of sweetness and cuteness. Xia Qingqing is also very satisfied with this dress and just prepared to try it on. Qin Xue, the clothes in this store are also very good. Pei Zixin led Han Qin Xue into the store, and the two naturally noticed Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing. Han Qin Xue is Han Fifan's cousin, who has been pampered since childhood and has been accustomed to various socialites and nobles. There is no one in Jiangqing who does not know Han Qin Xue, nor does Han Qin Xue know Qian Jin. But now the two stunning girls in front of me, not only in terms of appearance and physique, but also in terms of temperament, are very extraordinary. She has never seen them in the wealthy circles of Jiangqing. Is it from the capital city? Before Han Qinxue could say anything, Pei Zixin walked straight towards Pei Qian. Shallow little sister, what a coincidence. Han Qinxue was taken aback, so this is Pei Qian. How come it differs so much from what is rumored? Where's the ugly girl from the promised countryside? Pei Qian nodded lightly and said, Accompany friends. Han Qinxue couldn't help feeling jealous of Pei Qianqing's beauty, and also saw her so arrogant. Is this your attitude when talking to your sister? It's really impolite. Pei Qian raised his eyebrows and said, What does it have to do with you? Pei Zixin pretended to be strong and pulled Han Qinxue's hand, Qinxue, it's okay, she's still young. Han Qinxue had a good relationship with Pei Zixin since childhood, and when she looked so aggrieved, she became even angrier. People in the countryside just have no rules, she said Xia Qingqing, who had been silent all along, couldn't bear to see Pei Qian being said by Han Qinxue. She immediately retorted, I think you should be the most uneducated person, right? Han Qinxue's attention was originally focused on Pei Qian's body. At this moment, Xia Qingqing spoke up and just glanced over, taking a glance at the white princess-style dress in her hand. Give me the dress in your hand, I'm interested. There was nothing that Han Qinxue couldn't get, and since she was young, her family loved her, almost always responding to her requests, let alone a dress. Pei Qian looked at her arrogant and domineering appearance and coldly said, No, I won't give it. Is it your upbringing to steal someone else's things? Han Qinxue couldn't argue, but she didn't allow herself to not get the dress. She turned to look at the salesperson standing aside and said, Don't you know me? Bring the dress over. The salesperson doesn't know Pei Zixin and Han Qinxue, who were originally famous socialites in Jiangcheng, frequent customers of this shopping mall, and VIP members of our store. Their identities are even more prestigious. How dare you offend these two? The salesperson's eyes twirled, and they had already figured out which was more important. I am ready to take the skirt back from Xia Qingqing and hand it to Han Qinxue. Moreover, at first glance at their attire, I'm afraid they won't be able to afford to take a look. Our clothes may be quite expensive, so if you don't buy them, don't try them on. Miss Han is a senior member of our store, said the salesperson in a tone of disdain Han Qinxue hugged her chest with both hands and a proud expression on her face, yeah, you guys look so poor that you can't afford to buy a quick roll. Pei Ji, who had just said a few words at the beginning, felt secretly pleased that Han Qinxue, a fool, had helped him deal with Pei Qian, but he didn't have to put in any effort. Qin Shui, forget it. Pei Zixin was well aware of Han Qinxue's temperament, and when she said this, it was just adding fuel to the fire. Han Qinxue had already been displeased by her friend Pei Zixin over Pei Qian, and now she insisted on competing for a higher position here. Pei Qian is also a master of extreme skin care, can't afford it. Xia Qingqing on the side only felt amused when she heard it, took out her phone, and made a phone call. Hello, I'm at the XX store on the fifth floor of your mall. Let me see you within five minutes. Without waiting for a response from the other party, he hung up the phone and turned to look at the salesperson. How can you work here with such a service attitude? I won't say what kind of cat and dog can come in your store for now. Don't you even understand the basic principle of first come, first served, dot. 
Xia Qingqing finished speaking in one breath without any pause. The salesperson was originally a snobbish person, but was a bit taken aback by Xia Qingqing's words. While pondering how to deal with it, Han Qinxue spoke up again. It's just a bluff. I'm the Miss Han of the Han family, and I've never seen you at any big or small banquet before. I don't know what kind of small family you are. Xia Qingqing was too lazy to pay attention to Han Qinxue, who had always been aloof, and raised her hand to look at her watch. Just five minutes later, a middle-aged man in a suit came in and stopped panting in front of Xia Qingqing in Pei Qian. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Banquet 5 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 Banquet 5 Pei Zixin and Han Qinxue also silently looked at the man in front of them. It's quite punctual, Xia Qingqing said casually. Miss Pei, what do Miss Xia have to do? Song Ming knew that something was going to happen after receiving Xia Qingqing's phone call, and didn't dare to delay it for a moment. He immediately rushed over, looking a bit embarrassed now. The nearby salesperson huddled in the corner. Who will tell her why manager Song can know them both? Xia Qingqing sat down and crossed her legs, you ask your own employees. Song Ming then noticed the salesperson in the corner and said, Did you offend Miss Pei and Miss Xia? Who gave you the courage? Han Qinxue had never seen Song Ming before, but judging from the reaction of this salesperson, it was likely that he was the leader of them all. Han Qinxue smiled and walked forward. I want that dress, we are premium members of this store. Song Ming knew Han Qinxue, Han Fifan's younger sister, the pearl of the Han family, with a noble status. In addition, Pei Zixin, the eldest daughter of the Pei family, silently sighed for the salesperson in his heart. Just as he was about to say something, Pei Qian gave Song Ming a cold look. Song Ming silently made a clever move, knowing that Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing did not want to expose their identities in front of these two people. It's like this, Miss Han. After all, it was Miss Xia who first took a liking to it. Would you like to see other dresses that also suit you? Han Qinxue was furious and said, Who are you? Don't you know me? I'm Han Fifan's cousin. Pei Zixin looked at Song Ming, seemingly maintaining that there was no conflict between the two sides, but at first, his attitude towards Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing was probably not that simple. Pei Qian looked at Han Qinxue's fearless young lady and felt amused. Manager Song, I don't want to see this salesperson here in the future, he said Song Ming immediately nodded and looked at the salesperson, pack up and you can leave now. Your salary will be credited to your card. This shopping mall is when Cheren's industry in Jiangcheng, and it is not surprising that Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing are honored as guests here. At this moment, there was another sound of footsteps coming from the entrance of the store. The people in the store couldn't help but look at Gu Lanjin as he walked in. His eyebrows and eyes were cold, his facial lines were clean and sharp, and the tear stains at the corners of his eyes emitted a taste of abstinence. His whole face was incredibly handsome, almost 1.9 meters tall, with broad shoulders and narrow waist, an outstanding temperament. Han Fifan, who followed beside him, was also equally handsome, exuding a different aura from Gu Lanjin, appearing gentle and reserved. Even if Pei Qian had already met Gu Lanjin, he couldn't help but sigh again at God's favor towards him. As soon as Han Qinxue saw her cousin, she thought of the grievances she had just received from Pei Qian and immediately found a place to vent her anger. However, her eyes couldn't help but look in the direction of Gu Lanjin. She naturally knew Gu Lanjin, the first prince of the capital, who was the dream lover of countless women, and she was no exception. Pei Zixin couldn't help but clench her hand when she saw Gu Lanjin come in, and her heart trembled. She had never seen Gu Lanjin before, but had only heard Han Qinxue mention it. I didn't expect Han Qinxue to describe him without exaggeration. Han Qinxue couldn't help but take a step forward and said, Brother Lanjin, extraordinary cousin, what a coincidence. Gu Lanjin nodded. He had never seen Han Qinxue but for the sake of Han Fifan's face, 
he greeted her. Then Gu Lanjin looked inside and saw those captivating eyes. Pei Qian didn't speak or move, just like looking at an insignificant person. Xia Qingqing didn't know Gu Lanjin and Han Fifen, and just wanted to settle the bill and leave quickly. Well, Manager Song, let's pay the bill, she said Manager Song was recalling whether he had read the almanac when he went out today, and how he got into such a mess that even the person from the capital came to this small place in Jiangcheng. After quickly settling the bill for Xia Qingqing, she turned to look at Pei Qian sitting on the sofa, looking at her phone. Okay, let's go shallow. Pei Qian nodded and prepared to leave. At the door, Pei Qian saw Gu Lanjin and said calmly, Could you please lend me a hand? Gu Lanjin looked at the young girls with a hint of smile in her eyes. She turned to one side and watched them leave. After seeing Pei Qian leave, Pei Zhixin seemed to muster up the courage and took a step forward towards Gu Lanjin. Gu Xiao, I am Pei Zhixin from the Pei family. Nice to meet you. Gu Lanjin investigated Pei Qian and naturally knew that Pei Zhixin was her sister. However, from the situation she had just entered, the relationship between the two was not harmonious. After a simple nod, she looked at Han Fifen, who had long been pulled by Han Qinxue. I'll go back first. Then, the footsteps left lightly. Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing entered the elevator, and as they were about to close the door, a figure walked in. Pei Qian's heart thumped. This person is not here to seek justice for Han Qinxue, is he? She doesn't want to get into trouble with this prince. Although she is fearless, getting into trouble is always a problem. Before I could think much, the elevator closed the door and slowly descended. After a while, a deep and clear sound rang from inside the elevator. Miss Pei, long time no see. Upon hearing this, Pei Qian smiled and said, Mr. Gu, don't be safe. Gu Lanjin looked at those sparkling and beautiful eyes, and he could see that Pei Qian's smile had not reached the bottom of his eyes, with a hint of alienation. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Banquet 6 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Banquet 6 I heard that the Pei family held a banquet for Miss Pei tonight, and I'm not sure if I have the honor to attend. Pei Qian guessed in his heart whether the man had some kind of calculation in mind. For small households like ours, it's better not to go, Gu Xiao, in case you're not used to it. Gu Lanjin noticed Pei Qian's guarded attitude towards her, and her tone inevitably became gentle, wanting her to relax and tighten her guard. I just feel that Miss Pei is very similar to someone I used to know in Country M. Pei Qian immediately searched frantically in his mind. Unfortunately, his handsome face should have left a deep impression on him, but looking back on his days at the border of M country, he couldn't remember that person. Although Xia Qingqing beside her remained silent, she was shocked to hear these words and was also recalling them. I don't seem to have seen this person before. Pei Qian calmed down and said, Sorry, I grew up in an orphanage in Pusong town and have never been abroad. Gu Lanjin didn't take it seriously. Oh. That's really offensive. The elevator reached the basement level, and Pei Qian and Xia Qingqing got out of the elevator. Gu Lanjin quietly fell behind half a step on the other side of Pei Qian. Walking to the side of the car, Gu Lanjin smiled and said, Everything is fate, Miss Pei. Pei Qian remained silent and climbed onto his big G in a handsome posture, starting the car. As he was about to leave, Pei Qian thought for a moment and rolled down the car window. Gu Xiao, tonight's banquet is at the Shibin Hotel, he said as he spoke, he took Xia Qingqing and left the underground garage. Gu Lanjin sat in the car, murmuring to herself. Didn't you recognize me? Don't worry. Shallow, who is he? Xia Qingqing lazily huddled in the passenger seat, recalling the man from earlier. Pei Qian looked at the road ahead, controlled the steering wheel, and shook his head. I don't know him either, but I feel like he wasn't trying to test me just now. It's like he's convinced that I've met him in Country M. Anyway, we need to figure this out. 
Xia Qingqing nodded and understood that their return to China was a matter of great concern. Few people knew about it, and they were all confidants. Being exposed was not a good thing. All right, don't think too much about it for now. I think the person who was with him just now is so gentle, it's too much for my appetite. When did you fall in love with the type of literary scumbag? You even told me before that you like sunshine school grass, Pei Qian joked with his friend. Not long after, the car drove back to Xia Qingqing's apartment, and the stylist Xia Qingqing called was already waiting outside the door. Not long after, both of them were almost finished. Seeing Pei Qian change into a formal dress and walk out, even though Xia Qingqing has seen Pei Qian so many times, she can't help but marvel. Beauty, it's just too beautiful, like a seductive fairy. Perfectly combining coolness and allure. The stylists were all amazed by Pei Qian's beauty, but with a light makeup on, her eyebrows and eyes were exquisite, her eyes were as bottomless as an abyss, her nose bridge was raised, her lips were as delicate as rose petals, her perfect jawline and swan neck were stunning. Her long hair, curled like seaweed, hung down on her waist, her skin glowing white. The black gothic dress revealed the perfect curves of her figure, and her straight, snow-white legs made her fantasize. Shallow fairy, you are so beautiful. I am a man and I have already married you back home and surrounded you. Pei Qian looked at Xia Qingqing, who was still tinkering with her hairstyle, and jokingly said, How much dowry are you planning to give me? Of course, all of them. Two people come and go, talking and laughing. The phone ringtone on the table suddenly remembered, disrupting the atmosphere. Pei Qian looked at the unfamiliar phone number, originally wanting to hang up, but suddenly thought of something and pressed to connect. Hello. Where did you go? Do you still remember tonight's banquet? Do you need me to remind you? Su Ning's slightly angry voice came from her phone, and Pei Qian casually looked at the clock on the wall. Wait a moment, my friend and I will go by ourselves, don't worry about me. He hung up the phone. On the other hand, Su Ning, who had just been hung up on the phone, was not angry at all. Pei Zixin heard all the content on the side and advised, Mom, don't get angry and break your body. Su Ning stroked her chest and said, We need to teach her what rules are, otherwise sooner or later we will embarrass ourselves and ruin the face of the Pei family. Pei Zixin felt proud of Su Ning's strong opinion towards Pei Qian. Mom, actually this afternoon when I was shopping with Qin Shui, I saw my younger sister Qian Qian. A salesperson offended her, and later a middle-aged man came to help her. He even fired the salesperson. Pei Zixin continued with concern, I'm afraid that Qian Qian's sister will go astray, after all, the temptation of money may be too great for her. Are you telling the truth? Did that middle-aged man also send her back that night? Pei Zixin bit her lower lip and said, Mom doesn't believe me. Qin Shui was also present at the time to testify. As for the person that night, I didn't see them clearly, and I can't rule out that it was him. Su Ning took a sip of coffee and calmed down for a moment before saying, Don't worry about her for now. I heard that the young master of the Shen family will also attend tonight. You can personally go and receive her. The Shen family is not in Jiangcheng, and can be considered prestigious in the capital. Although it cannot compare to those top aristocratic families, it is also a highly respected existence for the Pei family in Jiangcheng. In addition, the Shen family had already been engaged to the Pei family, and the young master of the Shen family, Shen Haofeng, was also interested in Pei Zixin. Although the Shen family believed that the Pei family's identity towards Shen Haofeng was slightly inferior, they were still quite satisfied with Pei Zixin, the first lady in the city. End of this chapter